this movie is for Algebra Unit 4, Learning Target 5, dealing with writing equations that represent functions. A relation is just a set of ordered pairs, but a specific kind of relation is a function when every element of the domain, which is our x, maps to one and only one element of the range. So a function is a very specific kind of relation. And if you don't have a function, then you just have a relation. Functional notation is a way of writing an equation that is a function. So notation, just like scientific notation, is a way of writing things. We're going to write y in terms of x. So if I have an example of y equals mx plus b, we could write y as a function of x. That's how we say that. And we put y parenthesis x. This means y is happening because it's dependent on what we have for x. So notice nothing else on the other side changes. We say y of x equals mx plus b. We are essentially just replacing the y with y of x. So y of x is a synonym for y. Now we're going to evaluate these function rules when x is negative 2. So you can see here I have f of x, that's how you say it, equals 2x plus 3. Now this f of x is really standing for y. So this you could look at as y equals 2x plus 3, but because it's a function, I am going to write it in functional notation, which is f of x. And I'm going to plug negative 2 in every place where I see an x. So I plug negative 2 in here, and I'm taking f of negative 2. That means I'm finding the function after plugging negative 2 in for my input. So I put negative 2 in for my input, and I get 2 times negative 2, which is negative 4, add 3 is negative 1. And this is how you write it. f of negative 2 is negative 1. Pause the movie, add this to your notes, and then press play when you're ready for number 2. For this one, I have h of x. It means the same thing, just like f of x. I'm plugging negative 2 in for x, both here, here, and here. So I get h of negative 2 is the absolute value of negative 2 plus 3 times negative 2. I keep what's on the left. The h of negative 2 will stay all the way down. Absolute value of negative 2 is 2, and 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. So I get h of negative 2 is negative 4. It essentially is giving me my ordered pair negative 2, negative 4. That's how you write functions using functional notation, and you can plug values in to find the value of the function at that point. So let's look at f of x is negative 2x plus 4, and let's solve this for when f is, when you're finding f of negative 1. So let x equal negative 1. So I plug negative 1 in for here and here, and I get f of negative 1 is negative 2 times negative 1 plus 4, which is positive 2 plus 4, which is 6. So my final statement is f of negative 1 gives me 6, and that's how you write it. Let's try this one. g of x is negative 2 times the absolute value of x plus 2. This is meant to be g. That was my mistake. Instead of f of negative 3, you got to do g of negative 3. It has to match what you have here. So we plug negative 3 in for our x's. We simplify this absolute value first, which is 3, times negative 2 is negative 6, and then we add 2. So we get g of negative 3 is negative 4. And this is our ordered pair, negative 3, 4. Up here, our ordered pair, negative 1, 6. Pause the movie, try this one on your own for both the values negative 4 and 4, and then press play when you're finished. If you need more help, what you're essentially doing here is the red one is showing you how to find f of negative 4, 
and the blue equation is showing you how to find when f is 4, when you're solving for x equals 4. So pause the movie now, try these both on your own, and then press play when you are finished. Alright, so let's see how you did. You simplify each of these and you get f of negative 4 is 13, and over here you get f of 4 is 3. Sorry, negative 3. So we have negative 4, 13 is an ordered pair, and 4, negative 3 is an ordered pair. Try that now with this equation. f of a equals 6a minus 1 for both negative 4 and 4. Pause the movie, try this on your own, and press play when you are finished. Okay, so you plug in negative 4 for the red, 4 for the blue, and you should get negative 25 when you plug in negative 4, and you should get 23 when you plug in 4. So that's functional notation for an equation, and you're just plugging in values for your x, or in this case, for a. So this functional notation works for any function, and what we're going to do next is look at word problems and try to create that function. So let's look at this. You can estimate the temperature by counting the number of chir chirps of the snowy tree cricket. The outdoor temperature is about 40 degrees more than one-fourth the number of chirps the crickets make in one minute. What is a function rule to represent this situation? So we've got two things going on. We've got that it's chirps, and we have this temperature. So the first thing I'm going to do is identify which is my independent variable and which is my dependent. Chirps are going to fluctuate, and temperature for T. So I'm going to write my equation in terms of T and C. And I've got here that the outdoor temperature is about 40 more than one-fourth the number of chirps. So I'm going to have 40 more than one-fourth my number of chirps, and that will equal my total temperature outside. So you're creating a relationship between T, the temperature, and C, the chirps, based off of this information. So that's what we're going to be doing here. Let's look at this one. Landfill has 50,000 tons, or 50 thousand tons of waste in it. Each month it accumulates an average of 420 more tons of waste. What is a function rule to represent the total amount of waste after m months? Pause the movie, write your equation, and then press play when you are finished. If I let m equal the number of months and t the total amount of waste, we have a relationship that we know that we started with 50,000. But then, in addition, we have 420, not thousand, tons, 50,000 tons. We're including 420 tons more each month. That's a lot of waste. So, this would be our equation where M would be the months, number of months, and T is the total amount of waste, and we would have in tons. We're going to cross this one out because I did not include the diagram. We're going to go to this one, pause the movie, write your equation, press play when you are finished. $15 per day to board the dogs. Then we have to have a flea bath for $12. So we have total cost in the number of days. Our constant is 12 because it'll cost $12 for the flea bath. All, all dogs need to have that flea bath. Then it's $15 per day. So 15N plus 12 is T. For 10 days, I plug in 10 and I get 162. Will five days cost half as much as 10 days? No, because of this plus 12, it's a constant because of that. Okay, write a function rule for the area of a rectangle whose length is 5 feet more than its width. What's the area of a rectangle when its width is 9? So the first thing you do is start off with a rectangle, 
and represent the width with w, but the length is now in terms of w. And I know that the length is 5 more than the width, so it's w plus 5. So here's my length and width, and I know to find the area, I multiply these. So that's what we do. We take width times oops, width times w plus 5. And if you end up distributing in, you get w squared plus 5w. So you could use either equation. And that's our equation for the area. But it asks, what's the width? If the width is 9, what's the area? So we plug in 9. And we get that the area is going to be 126 feet squared. And that's, we're going to end on that one. I would like you to start your homework.